Hello, everybody. You are in the right place if you are looking for a Buildings Upgrade Prize Tools webinar. Um, we will give it a, a couple minutes here for um, folks to enter from the lobby, and we'll get started about 102. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Uh, let's go ahead and get started here. My name is Holly Carr. This is the Buildings Upgrade Prize Tools webinar. And I'm going to share my screen. And Are you seeing the buildings up slide? Okay, all right. Great, so um, if you are here today to learn about um, tools that might possibly help you with uh, putting together a building upgrade initiative as part of the Buildings Up or Buildings Upgrade Prize, uh, you are in the right place. And um, my name is Holly Carr. We'll start out today with just a brief introduction to the Buildings Up, um, the Buildings Upgrade Prize um, from my colleague Cassie at, at DOE. And then we will have presentations and demonstrations on three different tools that might be helpful to you um, as you're considering uh, putting together a concept plan or a submission for phase one of the prize. Um, this webinar is being recorded and we will be posting this on HeroX on the Buildings Up uh, website, so it'll be accessible to folks later on as well. And let's see, before we go there, let's go straight to Cassie. Um, and Cassie, you can go ahead and share your screen and just give folks a little um, overview of the Buildings Upgrade Prize. Cassie? Hi, everyone, um, and thank you all for joining us today. So I'm going to start out with just a brief overview of the prize. Um, so the Buildings Upgrade Prize, or Buildings Up, is a capacity building prize designed to accelerate the deployment of equitable, widespread energy efficiency and efficient electrification upgrade initiatives in existing buildings across the country. The prize is envisioned to consist of four phases over approximately five years, subject to approvals and the availability of funds. Um, right now, we're in phase one, or the concept phase, which is currently open, and applications are due by July 18th. Teams are asked to submit concept plans for scalable and replicable building upgrade initiatives in phase one. Um, these initiatives should include minimum technologies of heat pumps and or heat pump water heaters, as well as envelope upgrades as needed to um, help with comfort and reducing energy bills for building owners and occupants. Phase one will award over $22 million in cash prizes and technical assistance to the winning teams. Teams will apply to one of two pathways in phase one. In the equity-centered innovation pathway, teams will commit to develop scalable and replicable building upgrade initiatives and to complete their building upgrades in what we call equity-eligible buildings. Um, the full definition of equity-eligible buildings is available in the prize rules, um, section 3.5, but 
just a quick overview that includes affordable housing, um, disadvantaged businesses, underserved commercial buildings, buildings in Justice 40 census tracts, and, and on tribal lands, and other building types. Um, the Equity Centered Innovation Pathway teams will receive $400,000 in cash prizes and access to um, the prize ecosystem of technical assistance. The second pathway is the Open Innovation Pathway, where teams will also develop scalable and replicable building upgrade initiatives, and they may include equity considerations but are not required to complete their upgrades in equity eligible buildings. The open innovation winning teams will receive $200,000 and access to the technical assistance network. DOE is seeking 20 to 60 winning teams to join the Buildings Up coopetition. And we call it a coopetition rather than a competition because we are not looking to crown a single winning team at the end. Instead, we hope to see as many teams as possible move through the prize phases successfully. To address this challenge, we will need all hands on deck, working together and sharing our best ideas with one another to move farther, faster together. An application support bonus prize is also now open to support new and under-resourced teams to develop and submit a phase one application. Application support prize winners will receive $5,000 and 10 hours of technical assistance to help them develop their phase one submission. The deadline to apply for the application support prize is April 14th. At the end of phase one, winning teams will have approximately 12 months to build out their execution plans for their building upgrade initiatives. Future pilot and implementation phases are envisioned to have similar funding levels contingent upon approval and funding. To learn more about the prize, um, view the official rules and register for upcoming training and informational webinars, um, you can go to the HeroX website, which is referenced here, as well as the, um, by the QR code on this slide. Um, in order to um, participate in the prize, you'll want to click follow at the top of the screen uh, to receive important updates on the prize and, um, and then click solve this challenge when you're ready to submit your application. If you have any questions, um, reach out to the buildings up at nrel.gov email. That's, um, that will be referenced on a later slide. And we can put that in the chat as well. So for today's training session, um, we'll be focusing on a few um, tools and resources that relate to some of the criteria in the phase one application. So competitors and Buildings Up will submit their building upgrade initiative phase one concept plans by responding to a series of narratives on the HeroX website. The concept plans are scored based on the criteria that are shown here on the right. Today's training will cover information and resources that are most applicable to criteria one, two, and five on this list. I'll let that sit here for a couple of seconds to, for you to read. Um, and then here I wanted to share some of the upcoming informational webinars and training sessions that we have um, coming up soon. These are all available to register for on the HeroX website. Um, and so the first one I wanna mention is the, the next informational webinar, which is happening on April 7th. And that's where you can get a deep dive on um, everything to do with the prize eligibility, um, the different criteria and kind of more in-depth information than what I just presented. Um, so I recommend attending that one. And then we have several additional training webinars um, throughout April and, and the coming months to help teams develop um, portions of their applications. I do wanna iterate that these training sessions are not required and they're really just there as an added resource to teams, but teams are not going to be evaluated on whether or not they participated in the training sessions. And I will hand it over to Holly now to um, introduce the speakers for today's session. Great, thanks so much, Cassie. Um, I will once again share my screen. We're gonna try to keep it fresh for you here. So there'll be lots of screen sharing. 
um, and lots of different voices. Um, the first tool that we have available um, for folks to check out, and it looks like maybe you're seeing there. Hopefully that's better. Um, the first tool that we have available for folks to check out is the Equity Eligible Buildings Mapping Tool. Um, this tool is under development. I want to stress that we're demoing it. Um, it's not quite ready for prime time, but we hope it'll be available very soon and you'll get a good sense um, today of what the tool can do and how it can help. And we're actually going to move through um, the uh, the tool set sort of in order of how we think it may be, these tools may be useful to you as you're preparing your concept plans. Um, so the equity eligible buildings mapping tool is designed to help folks find equity eligible buildings um, geographically. Uh, so you can do lots of um, different searches and queries to find different types of equity eligible buildings, um, particularly if you're looking to um, submit an application in the equitable, sorry, in the equity uh, innovation pathway. So um, with us today to present this tool and, and give you a detailed demo is Dr. Hyun Zhao, also known as Joanne. Um, she is a principal analyst and interim director of the System Assessment Center at the Argonne National Laboratory, ANL. She leads many um, Department of Energy and industry-sponsored research projects on energy and emissions impacts and analysis of transportation technologies, uh, electric vehicle charging infrastructure modeling, and transportation energy burden analyses. Dr. Zhao's team has developed several energy justice mapping tools for different offices in the Department of Energy and the Joint Office of Energy and Transportation. Dr. Zhao is a member of the Transportation Research Board's Alternative Transportation Fuel and Technologies Committee. So I will turn it over um, to Joanne to share her screen and demonstrate this tool. Yeah, thanks, Holly. Uh, let me bring up the slides. Do you see my screen? Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for the time today and thanks for the opportunity for us to present the tool that is still under development. Uh, the link will be available very soon after this uh, webinar. We just don't have it ready yet. Uh, so this equity eligible buildings mapping tool, as Holly mentioned, is we developed this for the buildings app uh, project to visualize equity eligible buildings. Uh, it does provide the team the function uh, and a resource to identify equity eligible buildings for their proposed decarbonization zones that could be a sensor track, county, or city. Uh, I will show that in the tools later. Um, and it allows users to explore and produce reports uh, with parameters, including but not limited to qualified sensor track designated as a disadvantaged community and the socioeconomic factors associated with those sensor track. Uh, other parameters uh, also include, but not limited to, affordable housing data and also the school facility qualified for the Title I school-wide programming. Uh, so with that, I will go to the tool uh, to demo how to use that for this building up price. <clears throat> One second. See my uh, screen showing the tool? Taking that as a yes. Yes, we see it. Thanks. Okay, great. So again, the link will be available soon after this meeting. Uh, you will be uh, similar to what I'm showing on the screen, but not exactly the same. So this is our demo uh, link. So once you put a link there, uh, you will start to see the map uh, that's showing the United States. We don't. We do have Hawaii and Alaska included in, this, in the map. You just have to zoom in and out to see them. And this map here is showing you the affordable housing buildings, uh, also the disadvantaged community that designated by the CEJST database. Uh, we also show the tribal lands and, and the US territories. They are also considered as disadvantaged communities. Uh, and once I zoom in, you will see a light uh, shaded area that shows the US cities. Um, I want to note the affordable housing buildings um, showing this map 
uh, just a subset of the affordable uh, housing for the building up price. Uh, the detailed definition uh, of the rule is in the rule section uh, 3.5, if I'm not mistaken. That will give you the clear definition what is the qualified uh, eligible buildings. Uh, here is a subset for you to see uh, the buildings uh, geographically um, across the United States. Okay, so once you're in the tool, uh, you can search it just like you are using the Google map. So here I will just uh, type an example. So when you start to, um, to type the city, um, it will start guessing you where you want to go. Uh, and it's just like Google map, it even can correct your spellings if you don't remember exactly, just like what I'm having now. So if I go want to go to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and if you click there, the tool will lead you to that city. And this is showing you the city boundaries. And within the city, all the dots are showing the affordable housing buildings that are currently available from the, the HUD database. And if you interest to see how the database looks like and download your own data, and you can click here that will directly link to that website uh, for you to see how you can download and summarize the information. So again, so all the yellow dots are affordable housing uh, buildings and uh, the shaded area, the dark green shaded area, that's the disrenting community defined by the CEJST. Um, and, and the green, the light green area, that's the that's the, the US cities. So here is the Milwaukee. And here on the sidebar that you see the city name, the state, and here is showing the number of uh, affordable buildings. Uh, so I just know that this is a number of affordable buildings in the in this given geographic scale, and also the number of Title I schools in this area. And if you click the building uh, uh, box, then you will see a long list of building that is included every yellow dots that you see in this area. And the same, same thing for the schools, that if you click the school boxes, the Title I schools, you will see a long list of the school that was in your given area. So if you're interested in certain building uh, uh, dots, and I will just make one example, uh, you can click it. Uh, sometimes the tool will take a little bit of time to give you the report because there's a large database running with all the buildings and the schools uh, behind it, information behind it. So here, once you I click the one building, so it, it gives us the details information about that building. Uh, the address, the zip code, of course, the name and the city. Um, and it also gives us some of the housing data from the public uh, database. Uh, so as you can see, this is the owner name. And this is a, uh, it's a one, unit, uh, one unit bedroom, sorry, one bedroom unit apartment building, and it's targeted on the elderly uh, population. And as you navigate through the, uh, the tool, you will see some of the buildings are for multifamily dwellings. Uh, some of them are for disabled population. And this example here is showing you for the elderly uh, population. Uh, you can switch back uh, to track. Uh, so basically the building is selected and here we will show you the sensor track the building is located. And you can see the sensor track is not considered a disadvantaged uh, community in the CEJST. Um, uh, database, but you can see the indicators they have used to uh, define the socioeconomic factors. They also call it indicators for them to define this community. Uh, so this is the, all the data we draw from the CEJST database that include all kinds of socioeconomic factors, such as the uh, burden, the, the air quality, and also other uh, indicators that's available. Um, and going back to uh, the function here, so if you are certain about uh, uh, the sensor track you're choosing or the buildings uh, you are interested, you can click the full report uh, to print out the parameters and, and also in the information that you just selected. Uh, so I need to move this bar. So here it shows you uh, the location uh, in the map and also the address zip code information and also all the data you just saw in the uh, in the sidebar earlier. Uh, if you do have a large scale, for example, you have a county or city, then it will print out the long list of the schools and the buildings within that given geographic area. So let's see another way to search. Uh, for example, if you want to search by county, uh, you can search by sensor track here as well if you know the track ID. Uh, but if you want to search by county, you can go to the, uh, the box here, the drop-down menu has two options, track and the county. 
and you can go to the county. And here it gives you an example of how you could write the county and in a, in a way that the tool can recognize. So here example is a Cook County in Illinois, basically that's the city of Chicago in Illinois. Uh, but let's go to uh, another area that's um, San Juan County, New Mexico. Okay, and you can search. So then the tool will bring you to that exact location. And here this line shows you the county boundaries. So all the city and uh, county boundary, we use that uh, from the US census. So we're aligned with the boundary defined by the US census. So once you go to the county, you can see uh, the, the name of the county, the, the states, and again, showing you the, the high level statistic, the, the number of uh, affordable housing buildings. Uh, and also the number of the Title I schools. Um, and, and the same thing here that you can see a list of buildings uh, of all these 14 buildings and also a list of 57 uh, schools. Uh, for example, you, if you click schools, that it will show the parameters in the school. Okay. So that's showing you the, uh, the information for that school. Uh, so some of the uh, information that interested to the users, for example, the percentage, the student that are uh, qualified for the few free or reduced launch. Um, okay, going back to the county again. Um, so if you're interested to see the buildings, uh, you can zoom in to select the cities, so the buildings that uh, you want to see, but also you can select from the list here. Uh, so for example, uh, this, uh, again, the dark shaded areas, this is uh, the disfunded community, and the green area, this is the tribal land, and the light green shaded area, that's the city boundaries. Uh, so if you click one here, okay. sometimes it's not so many enough. Okay, okay. So once you click the building, uh, then the tab becomes uh, the building details. Uh, so this building, uh, you can see the, the name of the building, the address, the zip code. You can also see the data. So here is a multi-unit dwelling. So you can see they have a 48 two-bedroom units and a 12 three-bedroom units. Uh, and however, some of the information is not available for, for some of the buildings. For, in this case, the target population of this building is unknown. So it's not available in the database we have. Um, so again, you can switch back to, to see the city uh, and also you can switch to show the census track that this building you interested to see the indicators, the track indicators uh, of this building, uh, where the building is located at. Uh, again, you can print out a report for the census track, also the buildings and also the city. And once you, if you don't select a specific building within the sensor track and the city, the printout function will give you the list of the building and the schools within that sensor track or city. Um, so with that, I think I showed the most function of the tool. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. But oh, one thing I do want to note is uh, we have all the data available for users to uh, download on the front page. So once you open the link, uh, you will see this uh, introduction information to talk about what is this tool, why we are here, and all the links get into directly for to for you to download the data behind the tool. And also we have the contact information listed in the end of the page for any question about the building up price, then please contact the building office as indicated earlier. But for any questions about this mapping tool, please contact the address here. Um, again, this is still under development. So any comments or questions are welcome for us to make this better. Thanks, Thanks. Joanne. And we do have a couple of questions mm -hmm. um, specific to this tool. So the first question was, can a user search for a property by address? Okay, great. Um, I think you can search here. Um, I don't have an uh, address here. so. I will search Argonne National Lab and see how that works. It's pending sometimes again, like I said, the tool takes time to run through the database and get to the locations it's asking for. Um, while we're waiting for the, well, that was fast. 
maybe. Oh, no, I, I was. <laughs> um, while we're waiting, I can ask you the second question, which is yeah. um, uh, someone asking if they need to be given access to test drive and use the tool. Um, so I think uh, as soon as this tool is available for folks to use, which should be shortly, um, we will provide links to all of these tools from the Hero X website on Buildings Up. Uh, sorry, the Buildings Up website on Hero X. Um, and folks can go in and access these tools freely. They will, they are, the other tools you'll see today are already publicly available. This one will be publicly available and free to use. You don't need specific access. Um, any corrections to that, Joanne? Yeah, I think that's right. And for the address question, so if you type an address, uh, if it's not building related uh, or photo building address uh, currently in the database, you will lead you to the CT that address is located at. Uh, in this case, I just type the number, random number, and pick up the first choice that the Google map gives to me. And it just led me to the city. And hopefully that helps you to uh, find the buildings or the address or the location or even a sensor track that you're interested in. But if that address is not um, either afford an affordable housing building or located in a disadvantaged community or on tribal lands, um, or US territories, it's not going to go straight to that building. It will only yeah, go it, straight to that building if it happens to be one right, of those yeah, categories. Yeah, right? in this case, it just goes to the city. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I think that's all the questions we have for the moment on this tool. Um, folks should feel free to um, continue to enter questions in the QA box, um, and we can address additional ones at the end. Um, for now, I think we'll move on to our next tool. So thank you very much, Joanne. Um, and I will share my screen. And uh, introduce our next presenters. So um, our next tool that you'll be hearing about is our residential retrofit decision tool. Um, this uh, was developed at uh, Pacific Northwest National Labs. And so you'll be uh, receiving a demo and some more detail from Sharon Metzger and, um, and from my colleague, Avon. And um, as we're working through sort of the logistical progression of how you might use these tools, um, you, you can use the, um, the buildings mapping tool to find buildings that um, may be equity eligible um, in your area where you're hoping to do work. So once you've kind of located buildings that um, uh, might be good to do upgrades on, then you kind of need to think about, okay, well, what upgrades are the best ones to do for these buildings? And that's where um, this retrofit decision tool can help. So um, with that, Sharon Metzger, um, our residential program manager at um, PNNL is with us. She has led the development of the retrofit de decision tool and supported the analysis that led up to the tool um, along with um, colleagues at uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, uh, RMI, and uh, the National Renewable Energy Lab. Um, also with us, Avon Sauter Malloy. Um, Avon is a computational research scientist in the Building Technologies and Urban Systems Division at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. And in this role, he conduct, conducts interdisciplinary research and analysis to support energy policy and technology development for uh, the Department of Energy's Building Technologies Office. So thanks to both of you. Um, and you can go ahead and share your screens and show us the tool. Thanks. Thanks, Holly. Uh, all right. Can you see that all right? Yes. We can, oh, but you might want to swap that. We see your slide and the next slide. So I think you're, oh. we're seeing your presenter mode. There you go. Is that better? Okay. okay. Great. All right. So um, as Holly was saying, this tool um, that we're going to show today is actually well, we're actually going to talk about a couple of different tools, um, but really the goal is to be able to help determine um, what kind of upgrade packages make the most sense for your building stock. So, um, and I will just reiterate that this has really been a group effort. Um, Avon and I are from PNNL and um, LBNL, and then we're also going to be talking a little bit about 
some NREL tools. So we're definitely uh, definitely working as a team here. Um, so really just when you're starting to think about this, if you already um, know which building segments you want to target, this is kind of like a path that you can take um, kind of as a user of these different tools that we're gonna talk about today. You can kind of work up in this, um, on this end of the decision tool, this decision um, process here. If you're not sure which building segments you wanna target, we definitely recommend starting with ResStock and Comstock. Um, but so as you're going up through this decision process, and if you do already know which building segments you do want to target, basically if you're sort of less comfortable with data products um, and you're looking for something more simple to provide those recommendations, we're definitely going to recommend to go to the retrofit decision tool, which again, we'll talk about all of this, just trying to show how they fit together. And then if you are more comfortable with those data products um, and kind of having that bigger picture view, we do recommend going to the interactive data portal. Um, and so Avon will talk more about that in a bit here. So starting off with you're not sure which building segments you want to target. Again, same example um, that we just saw um, with the other tool. So affordable multifamily housing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So the first thing that you definitely need to um, kind of understand in order to get our arms around this um, from a building stock standpoint is what the climate zone is from the, the Building America climate zone map and then also the ICC climate zone. So in this case, we have cold climate zone and then climate zone 6A. So if you go to the um, ResDoc tool, there's a, um, there's a public facing dashboard that um, looks at the typology study that was recently done by NREL. Um, it's a really great way, place to start as you're thinking about your building stock. So what I've done here is just filter on the right um, by the cold, very cold climate zone, which is bundled together in this tool, and then the IECC climate zone or ASHRAE climate zone of 6A, and then filtered further by the state. And then if I kind of look in more detail, this is just a zoomed in picture of there, um, zoomed in on the multifamily side of things, I'm seeing that there are um, a large number of buildings, so that's down here, a large number of buildings that have wood frame construction that were built um, before 1940. Um, and then those buildings are using an average um, thermal end use intensity that's pretty high. So maybe this is a place that I would like to target. Um, so if I'm less comfortable with data products, I'm going to go to the retrofit decision tool. So I'm gonna take us there now. Okay, and can you all see that? Yep, looks good. Okay. So this tool, um, again, has been part of this collaboration um, between RMI, NREL, LBNL, and PNNL. Um, in this tool, we're really looking to understand what it would take to achieve zero carbon alignment. Um, so that is, it, it's well-defined um, in a report that is going to be linked to here, um, but ultimately kind of like a, a high level way to think about this is, especially like in the single family home space, would be that your roof space is enough to offset um, if you put solar on that roof, that it would offset the energy that would be used in that home, and that that energy that is being used is, um, you know, electric, so that it can ac actually use that offset. Um, so there are five different packages that can be um, recommended through this tool. So one of them is actually no upgrade recommended, and this may be for newer construction buildings. Um, or buildings that are already all, all electric, but and that have maybe been retrofit already, so that they have kind of a nice envelope already. We're not going to want to 
do more work to them, that's not going to be our biggest bang for our buck. Um, then we have equipment electrification. Maybe we still we have a pretty good envelope, but it's not um, it's not an electrified building. So we we want to take it take it there by doing that equipment electrification. And then we have a basic envelope and equipment electrification, which means that we might need just a little bit of help there on the envelope. Um, this is typically one inch of exterior insulation that can be done during a residing project and low east storm windows. And then we're gonna go deeper as we get through the, the other packages. So we're gonna start with this um, example in Milwaukee. And as you can see, if you start to type um, a specific county or state, it'll start to filter for you and you can just click on that. In our case, um, we found that there were a number of buildings that were multifamily with two to four units built before 1940. And then the building is greater as a whole building is greater than 2,800 square feet um, no, with natural gas, no air conditioning. This is something that I'm, I'm kind of just assuming. Um, again, you may know more about your own building stock, but um, let's say in an older building in a colder climate that I'm just guessing that there's not central AC or, um, oh yeah. So, and then actually I'm gonna choose room AC because people probably have that. Um, so this means we're not gonna have ducts. We are gonna have uh, natural gas water heater use, single pane windows with frame walls. And then um, we're probably not gonna have wall insulation for such a old building, but at some point there's probably been some attic insulation put in. We just verify that we're not a robot and then submit. So this is the output. It's giving you this recommended package. In this case, it's saying that it would recommend a current code envelope plus equipment electrification. If you scroll down here to um, the table, it kind of goes into more detail about what, what that exactly entails. And, and this is really tying back to this um, analysis that's been done through all of these this lab collaboration. Um, one thing that I think is helpful about this tool as well is that for contractors who might be using this, um, they can go directly to Solution Center content and um, for every place that says that there is a checklist, there's really, um, it's really detailed information about how you can install these things correctly. So there's really just like an extra little level of, of assistance there. Um, in every case, I mean, it is going to, this is representative of an analysis. So it is not going to give you as detailed of a recommendation or as accurate of a recommendation as an energy audit would do. So um, if, you know, if you're to that point um, where you have that, the, the, um, the workforce available to you and, um, you know, you can really do those energy audits in each building, that is definitely recommended. Um, okay. So now I'm going to go back here. Is it the wrong thing again? Yes. Yeah, you want to swap that? Okay. Um, so if you are more comfortable with data products, um, then you should use um, this more dynamic tool that's really thinking about the big picture. Um, it's an, and it's this dashboard that's also in Tableau. So, uh, even do you want to take it away? Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Sharon. And hi, everyone. So I will share my screen and just relatively quickly talk about this data dashboard, which accompanies the analysis project and the report that Sharon mentioned. And you can read about the report and some of the details here, as well as on the retrofit decision tool. But really what this is, is for folks who might come from more of a research perspective or an analysis um, perspective and want to dig in a little bit deeper to the analysis that underpins the recommended packages that Sharon was showing in the, in the other tool. So this is a link that we can put in the chat to a Tableau dashboard. And what you're seeing here is the results of this work that attempts to 
make recommendations across all states for the United States residential building stock in terms of which upgrade levels are recommended. So this is a landing page that you'll come to and there's a lot of different links that you can um, explore here and I won't spend much time talking about these, but I just wanted to show how one might use this dashboard to explore recommended packages in a similar way that you would um, using the tool that Sharon just showed or for a similar case. So this is the this is the detailed segment table for export tab. You can navigate this dashboard via all these tabs that you see here. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. So what you're seeing here is this um, web, uh, this web page has been filtered for a similar case as Sharon was looking at, although a note that this data uh, is at the geographic resolution of state. And so Sharon was showing a more specific case for Milwaukee. So what you're seeing here is for the full state of Wisconsin, but you can see similar variables or similar uh, parameters here. So the climate zone, the type of building, the vintage, the wall structure, the, the window type, heating and water heating fuel. And then what you'll see that's slightly different is here you can see across the state of Wisconsin, the number of housing units that are assigned each of these different upgrade package levels. So um, as Sharon was showing, there's a recommended package based on the inputs for the decision tool, but there's uh, obviously a distribution of building types that match these general characteristics. And so there's going to also be a distribution of upgrade packages that are assigned or recommended to those segments. So this is where you can dig in a little bit deeper. And in addition to looking at the number of housing units and the average floor area per housing unit, we also have calculated metrics like um, annual site energy uh, savings and also CO2 savings and utility bill savings. And so you might be interested to look at the, the potential savings impact of meeting these upgrade levels for a given state or a given uh, region. And so on the right hand side of this page, again, I'm zoomed in a little bit, but you can have you can filter for any state that you're interested in. Um, and then you can look at different building types and vintages and then all these, uh, these other characteristics, I think that uh, match what Sharon was showing in the, the retrofit decision tool. Just two quick things to note is that um, the decision tool is going to allow you to get the county level resolution. So if you have a very specific county that you're interested in, you can uh, use the decision tool. But if you're interested more so in kind of looking at multiple states that correspond to a given climate region, then you can explore um, this table and it's easy to access and then download these data. Um, there's a, for those familiar with Tableau, there's a download button here that will give you this as a spreadsheet, so you can go in and do your own, you know, um, cleaning and filtering with the spreadsheet. And then just so you know that there are lots of other resources available here. So you can look at these upgrade package assignments in a, in a map, and those are broken out by both single family and multifamily. And then, as I said, we, we've also calculated other metrics like energy savings. And so you can filter for a given building type and heating fuel in a particular region. And you can see what the, the um, estimated energy savings are for a given upgrade package. And these are annual savings. We also look at utility bill savings, obviously a very important component of thinking about upgrading buildings. So you can again, do the same sort of filtering and look at these uh, utility bill savings. And then finally, we also have calculated um, CO2, projected CO2 savings for a couple of different grid future scenarios. Um, which I won't spend any more time talking about. But this is just a, a quick overview of this more kind of data intensive um, tool that or, or dashboard that accompanies the report and also is kind of a, a look at some of the more detailed data underpinning the tool that Sharon was just showing. So with that, I will turn it back over to Sharon. Thanks, Avon. All right. So we're going to go through, and can you see my screen? Yep, looks good. OK. Um, so we're going to go through another example here. Um, so um, a mobile home in Navajo Nation, New Mexico. So in this case, again, just assuming that we don't quite yet know what the building stock is that we're looking for, um, we're going to go through the example of looking in 
these climate zones. So um, in this case, we do we are in a cold climate zone, but in um, in the IACC climate zone map, we're in climate zone five B here. So if we do use that ResDoc tool to look closer at this, um, again, this is pre-filtered already um, in this case, but it does show you know, on the map how that works, uh, how that's kind of filtering down. And so this is showing the building stock that applies to that area. And then zooming in a little bit, um, we're looking at mobile homes that there's different um, ones that we could look at here um, in terms of the year, but the number of buildings, you know, it's showing us how many buildings are in that area and then what the, um, the average thermal end use intensity is for each of those buildings. So you can see that there's quite a lot of um, energy use intensity coming from these buildings that are mobile homes in this area uh, built between 1940 and 1979. So again, if you are less comfortable with data products, we're gonna to go to that retrofit decision tool. And um, so in this case, again, we um, this tool does only work with counties. So the county that's closest um, in this case is San Juan County, New Mexico. And so we're gonna click mobile home. I'm, I'm gonna look at what can we do about those buildings built between 1940 and 1979. We're gonna say that that building is less than 1500 square feet. It's gonna, let's, we're just gonna do um, in this case, just an example where it's an electric. It's in a, it is in a cold climate, but I'm gonna say that in this case, we're gonna have central AC, which means that we do have ducts. And again, electric water heating, single pane windows, wood frame walls. I'm gonna guess that there is not wall insulation. You could say not sure as well, um, but that there is ceiling insulation. And I am not a robot. And so this is going to give us um, another recommendation. This is the basic envelope plus equipment electrification recommendation. Um, and so again, you're gonna see just that when you get to this point of, um, you know, the actual envelope recommendations towards the bottom of this table, you're gonna see that these are, um, these are specific to a smaller, a smaller wall insulation upgrade to get you to that zero carbon alignment. And then again, still more guidance there on the on the right. Um, so that is the example that I was going to show for um, for that Navajo Nation. And I'm just going to do one more quick example for you as well. Um, I don't think we have time. We're not, uh, Avon, do you wanna do the second tableau? No, that's okay. I think folks are uh, should be aware that, you know, you can look at both of these cases in the data dashboard that I showed previously. We just changed the filter options. So okay. why don't you go ahead, keep going. All right, so um, I, I guess, so this, um, it's just a slide to show that we are working with folks around the country on helping get this um, exterior insulation concept to be as streamlined as possible. Uh, we've got lots of training materials, brochures for consumers, things like that. If you have any questions about it, feel free to go to this website or let me know. Um, I do wanna do an example of if you don't know which building segments you do wanna target, but you are in a commercial or you're looking at commercial buildings. Um, so from that perspective, we do have this third example. So if you're in um, Orlando, Florida, and you're looking at those commercial buildings, again, we wanna make sure we understand which climate zones we're in. So we're in a hot, humid, and we're in 2A. 
And so if you go to Comstock, which is the other link there, um, that's gonna give you this ability to filter down here. And so we're looking at, it's a slightly different set of data that's behind this tool. So it, on the right-hand column, it doesn't look exactly the same as it does on the red stock side. However, you're still getting really um, somewhat similar information in this table format. So we're in the hot zones one through three, um, that ASHRAE climate zone 2A. And in this case, I do, I'm just trying to think about and target our thermal loads. So um, kind of zooming in a little bit, it, you can kind of see what building types are rising to the top in terms of number of buildings um, and that energy use intensity on average per building. Um, so just this is just another example of how you might um, get information, more information on the commercial building side. And that is all we have for you today. So please let us know if you have any questions. Um, thanks for your time. Thanks so much, Sharon and Avon. Um, I know that was a lot, folks. Um, these tools are really powerful, and we just want to let you know through this webinar that they exist. Um, folks, and, and that they can help you even in your phase one concept submission um, to get a sense of what buildings might be a good fit for a, uh, an initiative, what kinds of upgrades might be a good fit for an initiative. But if this seems really overwhelming, never fear. Um, teams that um, move on into phase two, um, there will be a lot of technical assistance available to help teams make some of those decisions or refine some of those decisions about which building types to um, really pursue and with what upgrades. Um, so this is just a, an overview today. Um, and our last tool that I wanna be sure we get to, uh, let me share my screen again real quick. Um, there we go. So the last tool I want to be sure we get to is um, our federal funding and technical assistance sources for buildings upgrades. So um, we've identified equity eligible buildings. We have looked at what kinds of upgrades might be a good fit um, for some of those buildings. And now Harris Engelman, who is a fellow here in the Building Technologies Office from um, Housing and Urban Development, HUD, agency. Um, he is going to share with us um, some uh, a tool to help you find funding for how to pay for these upgrades. So with that, I will turn it over to you, Harris. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Holly. Um, so I'm just going to quickly share my screen. OK. Hopefully everyone is seeing um, my screen. So I am just going to start um, really quick and dirty kind of look at this resource. Um, so this is located on the Hero X site where you're going to be applying for uh, the building for the building upgrade upgrade prize. Um, as you can Harris, see, I'm not seeing yeah. your screen yet. I don't know if other folks are. It says you've started sharing your screen. Double click to enter full screen mode, um, but I'm not seeing your screen. Just black. Okay. There we go. I see it. Now you see it. Okay, great. <laughs> great. Well, thank you, Holly. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, so this is a is a resource. Um, obviously the, the name is a little bit wordy, um, because we're looking at both federal funding sources and technical assistance sources, uh, that prize applicants could potentially use for building upgrades. Um, so currently we have fifty three different resources. So there's a lot out there, and we kind of really just want to have a super basic, um wide overview of, of what's out there. Um, so first things first, uh, you're going to go on to Hero X. It's in the resource tab. It's currently the first resource, um, the newest one uploaded. And you'll see there's both a PDF and the actual link to Airtable. Um, and for people that don't know what that is, um, I also didn't before I made this, uh, Airtable is sort of just like a, a souped up or like a searchable Excel. Um, so sort of like Excel, but just a little bit more user friendly, a little bit easier to use, um, and and sort of to frame this, you know, we're thinking of this really as like a planning resources resource. So if you're thinking about upgrades for your city or your community or your service area, you know, you want to think about how to pay for it. Um, so this can kind of help you think through what what resources are out there and um, who you need to apply to to get that funding. Um, and just a quick caveat before I move into the actual resource, um, this is you know, a collection of resources 
and it's a suggestion. Um, it's definitely not a guarantee of funding availability, but really just to give everyone kind of a, a glimpse into what could potentially be possible um, as you're planning your concept or your execution plans. Um, so now just to jump into it. So like I said, there's a cover page and this link, um, the cover page, I'll just quickly open that. Um, right, so the cover page again has all these caveats that I just mentioned uh, that, you know, we're not guaranteeing funding by any means. This is just kind of an informational resource and then gives you uh, some quick details about how to use this. We're not gonna go into that because I'm gonna be covering that today, um, but there are four tabs. This is what it looks like to filter, which I will, I will go through. Um, and then what is helpful is that just quick descri descriptions of um, different terms that are used in the resource. And the last thing that I'll add is, as I mentioned, this is a federal tool, um, but there are some other external sources that go through state or local or utility funding. Um, and there are some links here that you can look at uh, that would help you identify those. So now that we've very quickly looked at the cover page, uh, I'm gonna jump into the resource itself. So this is uh, the public version. So, you know, everyone can play with it as much as you want. You can hide, you can change the view, you can filter. Um, and there are sort of four different tabs. So eligibility overview. So that's if I'm X applicant, what program can I apply for? So for example, if I'm a housing developer, I can apply for these opportunities. Uh, if I'm in a state energy office, I can apply for these. Um, next acronyms and definitions so um if anyone's ever applied for a building related you know prize or anything before you know there's a lot of terms um government loves acronyms so just kind of quickly trying to to run through some things that you might see and kind of like what they mean um it's definitely not you know complete and missing some things but just to give ideas of sort of if i see hud oh that's the u.s department of housing and affordable development um, and then some of these definitions, and I think that's really important and something I want to flag, is that um, when you're applying for a lot of these programs, they'll use a term like affordable housing. And the, you know, there's I, I gave sort of you know a basic a baseline definition, but it's really really important to look at every single program's website or guidance or regulations to understand what they mean. Because when I say affordable housing, I may be talking about area median income, but when you say affordable housing. You might might be talking about you know another term, so it's really important to to you know use this as a starting off point, but to look at each of the individual programs to make sure when I think that I'm affordable housing, am I actually affordable housing when it comes to X Y Z program? Um, so now actually kind of getting into the meat of everything. Um, so we have two kind of tabs that are split out: application opportunities. Um, right here so these are things that you apply to so for example a tax credit a prize like buildings up um a grant or a rebates uh those are all things that you apply to and the difference between that and then these block grants where block grants um and there's only eight of them that we have listed those are the ones that were kind of given out to a jurisdiction so like to a state or a county and they kind of decide how to split that money out so it's split because you're not directly applying for a you know this community development block grant like your county is kind of deciding or your city is deciding how they want to give that out so that's just a quick kind of uh, explanation of the difference and i think where this tool is going to be most useful for applicants is really looking at these application opportunities so currently we're sorted by um a to z program name but you could obviously sort by anything else so i'm just going to quickly run through the different tabs and then talk about two use cases, um, program, program name, award type, so tax credit, grant, prize, et cetera, um, eligible building types. So these are split into commercial, residential multifamily and residential single family. There's also a TBD because some of these programs are still getting designed. Uh, they're not actually, you're not able to apply to them yet, but we know that they're coming down the line and that will be updated You know, as we know that uh, as more resources come out, but those are kind of the three main ones. And then the next one is this building description detail. So this is kind of places that where the different programs restrict um, who can apply or who gets money. So affordable housing, rural, tribal, uh, we'll go into those a little bit more. Um, just quickly, emphasis means that they prefer those types of applicants, but they would take other ones and only means only that type of 
uh, applicant can apply. So for the, the schools campaign right here, only schools can apply. Um, next, eligible uses. So this, this is again, kind of just an idea of what I can actually use these funds for. Um, status, this is whether or not you can apply. Um, so waiting final guidance or announced means that these are in the process and they will be coming out soon. Um, who applies? I think that's really important to know kind of, okay, if I want the 25C tax credit, which is the first one on this list, if I'm a city, I can't apply for that tax credit, but the resident has to apply for it. Um, who do you apply to? So sort of what agency is in charge um, and who you're applying to? And then a website. So that's really where you get the deep, the deep information about, okay, what's the timeline? What do they mean when they say affordable housing, et cetera? Um, and then a quick about, which I just pulled from all their websites, just to kind of get an idea of what they're talking about when they're talking about themselves. Um, so um, as I mentioned, you can filter. Um, filtering, I think, is really useful. Uh, but I would really recommend that you look through all the options first, just to get a kind of an idea of what's available. Um, so if I was an affordable multifamily owner, um, so to take the example that we've been using in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I would not filter by affordable housing. I would filter by multifamily and I'll, I'll show you why. Um, so quickly, this is how you filter. So I'm gonna hit a condition. I'm gonna hit program eligible building type and I'm gonna hit has any of multifamily. So now I'm filtered. You can see we went from 45 to 36. So I'm just gonna quickly show you that if I had filtered by has exactly, I only have two. So it's really important to use that has any of, because that will include kind of your, your more inclusive ones, the ones that you know have multiple types of buildings. So just to quickly go back, has any of multifamily. So again, I'm an affordable housing owner in Milwaukee. What can I apply for? So I look through this list of 36. I see that there are some that say affordable housing bonus. Great, that means I can get more money because I'm an affordable housing uh, you know, developer. I see one that says HUD PBRA, so that's a specific HUD program. I'm not part of that program. I'm not eligible. Um, I see these bonuses. I see these emphases. I can take those. Oh, here's something that says tribal only. So I know that instead of actually 36, there are 30, around 30 that I'm eligible for. So I, I really think that the, the places to filter are um, building type and uh, also, you, it might be helpful to filter by status, so whether or not it's open or not. Um, and beyond that, I think filtering actually would end up making you miss different opportunities that you could be eligible for. Um, so again, for this affordable housing in Milwaukee, um, you know, if I was affordable housing on a tribal in a tribal area, I would be eligible for these tribal ones. But it's really important to kind of think through what are the categories that I'm eligible for or that my team is eligible for when you're applying. Um, and just to quickly look at the tribal example um, that people have discussed before the Navajo Nation. So that's that would be a single family. Um, start here, switch that over. Again, uh, 32 options, and I'll see that there are quite a few that are tribal only. So I'm definitely gonna put those on my list. I'm definitely gonna look through that and make sure that I know all the information about those programs. Um, yeah, so that, that's basically kind of the, like I said, the, uh, the quick overview. I think this is a really great use for, resource to kind of get started and sort of think through, okay, I want to, I want to be part of this, I want to apply for this, for this prize, what will that look like? Um, and that is, that's it. Thanks so much, Harris. Um, thanks for speeding through. I know we've gone a few minutes over. I think we have responded to um, the questions folks have put in the Q&A. Um, just want to note that we will be posting this webinar and uh, the recording of this webinar on the Buildings Up uh, webpage on HeroX. Uh, encourage folks to go to HeroX.com slash Buildings Up and follow the prize so that you'll uh, get notices of um, uh, key updates for the prize and you can find the recording there. We will also be sending out links to these three tools so that folks can go um, explore them uh, at their leisure. So thanks again to all of our presenters and thanks to folks for um, coming by to learn about these tools. Um, have a great afternoon. <laughs>